Welcome. welcome! So welcome to our first vegetable masterclass ever. This is aubergine, also known as eggplant. We're gonna go through the basic, the nuts and bolts and teach you everything about how to cook and use aubergine. This is why eggplant got its name. Look, have a look. It literally looks like an egg growing on a plant. Couple of super interesting facts. In Italian, it's known as a melanzana, which, which also means mad apple, apple of madness. So it was believed that it would make you go mad. This is back in the Victorian times. When they believed nightshades, aubergine is part of the nightshade, nightshade family, and they believed nightshades had some poisonous properties. Yeah. It's also back in the fourth century in China, they used to use it as dye to dye their teeth. It gave a nice metallic look to their teeth. So another use for aubergines. But we wanna run through. So our new book, The Veg Box, is all about teaching how to use vegetables more. We've taken 10 veg, done them 10 ways using 10 ingredients. This week we're gonna talk about aubergines and we're really gonna show you some of the uses. A lot of people think aubergines are chewy, they're rubbery, they don't taste good. That's because you don't need to cook them. We're gonna show you three ways now that are simple and easy how to cook aubergines. First tip in terms of cooking aubergines or eggplant, it has quite a slippery surface. So either use a sharp chef's knife such as this. However, we find it easier to use a bread knife. So in like this, a bread knife is just more efficient from having chopped so many tons of aubergines in our kitchens and cafe and restaurant uh, bread knife. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna make grilled aubergine or eggplant bacon. It's super tasty, it's easy, deeply umami, and really tastes of bacon. The idea of an aubergine as a bacon might sound crazy, but in essence, the aubergine is a carrier for a smoked, umami, mapley, sweet, delicious flavor. So it's a conduit. Okay, myth number one, aubergines need to be salted. <coughs> Incorrect. Uh, aubergines, that's been bred out of them. Traditionally, aubergines were very bitter, older varieties, but now through various different breathing methods, they do not need to be salted to remove bitterness. Salt is simply to add flavor. Okay, if you wanna start cooking with less fat, be conscious that aubergines are like sponges. They just absorb fat. So in the case of this, rather than me mixing oil through them, where they're gonna end up taking probably four or five tablespoons of oil, I'm gonna fry them and just add oil as they cook. It means they're gonna absorb it less we're gonna cook out the moisture and then they're gonna be ready to absorb that oil. After they've been cooking for about two minutes, maybe two to four minutes, it's time to turn them. See beautiful charring. You wanna cook them until they do have nice rib marks. We're using a griddle pan here. Obviously, if you don't have one, you can just use a normal frying pan, except the lines do look kinda of cool on them. Top tip, if you actually do compress them slightly, you do get more caramelization, you do get more moisture evaporating, and you do get a little more caramelization. Okay, for our dressing, two tablespoons of maple syrup. Beautiful. Could I use agave syrup or yes. golden syrup? Yes, you could probably even use a little bit of sugar. Next step, tamari or soy sauce, three tablespoons. One, two, three. Great. We're gonna add a little bit of oil just for extra caramelization, about a tablespoon, just a little bit. Beautiful. I've got smoked paprika, I'm gonna go with about three quarters of a teaspoon. That's the technical measurement with your hand, is it? It is my hands, yeah. Smoked okay. paprika is what gives that beautiful smoky, oaky taste, which is super important. And it gives a nice red hue to it, which is really nice too. A little pinch of black pepper, that does look pretty cool in there, look. Well, just give it a good mix. Okay, so see, we've got ribs on both sides. It's got nice char marks on both sides. They're well done, it's beautiful. A lot of the moisture's evaporated. They have a nice kind of glazed color to them. You wanna make sure that they've kind of hit that melt in your mouth texture, where they're kind of caramelized, they're soft, they're gooey, they're magnificent. If in doubt, add a little bit of extra oil. It's just literally gonna enable more caramelization. And if you wanna actually use less oil, use a spray bottle. <clears throat> so a spray bottle is a good way of using less oil. Okay, time to go in with our dressing here. Try to be a little bit accurate when you're putting it in. This is gonna to start to seize. Turn it off the heat. There's enough, enough kind of residual heat in your pan and just slowly add it in and move quick. I'm gonna turn it around. Important, there's enough residual heat in these that these are cooking quickly. So just take them off the heat. Et voila, our aubergine bacon. I'm gonna it Yeah. Okay, here's our aubergine bacon. As you can see, it's soft, it's pliable. Uh, Mm. It's melting my mouth. It's sweet. It's chewy. It. It's maple. It's hot. We can tell from the it's noise. Melt it's melt in my mouth. Okay, now we're going to turn it into a sandwich. Delicious aubergine bacon sandwich. Okay, first step, we have our sourdough bread, freshly baked this morning. On, on to it, I'm going to go with some vegan mayonnaise. If you're looking for a vegan mayonnaise, we have a great recipe. Do I'll put the link down below. Next up, the cheese is a 
And then finally, we're going to top this with the aubergine or eggplant bacon. A couple of big, nice, nice long strips. I'd pop in plenty of it. Yeah, really go. Really does look fab, doesn't it? I'd say it's loads, yeah. Oh, that's going to be flavor, flavor, flavor. And there we go. There is a fantastic sandwich. And there for the fun bit. Ready? Okay, next up, we're gonna make baba ganoush, one of the nicest aubergine dips with charred Ooh. aubergines, where they literally reach a melt in your mouth. Mm. So I took aubergines, I sliced them in half, placed them face up, sprayed them with a little bit of oil, sprinkled a nice little bit of salt in them, preheated the oven to 220 degrees, turned them over and baked them for 40 minutes. So. I'm gonna take out the aubergines. I've roasted these 220 degrees Celsius for 40 minutes. Okay, so you'll notice here when I take these out just how like roasted they are. So look at that. Like these are literally melt in your mouth aubergines. A fork should just go in so soft and have absolutely And go no right the way to the skin. Beautiful. So now pick them up. Obviously these are really hot. If you're heat sensitive, wait until they cool. Take a spoon and you're literally just gonna scrape the insides out and it comes out so easily. And it's really, really creamy. You'd be so surprised. And make sure to include all that caramelized flesh because that gives that charred, that smoked, that kind of extra flavor. And here's, here's a super interesting fact about aubergine. So aubergine is in fact botanically a berry. Did Ooh. you know? But uh, wisdom is knowing to use it like a vegetable. And I'm not, not, not in a fruit salad. Oh, <laughs> you. Next up, I have two cloves of garlic, which I've diced nice and finely. In they go. Garlic is such an important component to this. I've got tahini. So try to go with light tahini rather than dark tahini. I'm gonna go with about, about 80 grams. Like a generous portion. Next step, juice of a lemon. Squeeze through your hand. Next step, I'm gonna go with a nice generous pinch of sea salt. I'm using a coarse sea salt. Finally, we're gonna go with a bit of olive oil, just about two to three tablespoons. Take a spoon or a fork, and we're just literally gonna bring it together. You don't need a food processor, you don't need a blender. Traditionally, yogurt is used, but you don't really need it. Okay, I like it, I like it when there's little chunks in it. You can obviously blend it until it's super smooth, but that is class. Like when you get those, that is amazing, genuine, wow. And most important thing with this is just to balance the seasoning to your palate. If you like it more acidic, add more Jeez. lemon. You want it salt, you want it more garlic. It's yes. really Brian. easy to customize, but it's so much flavor. And when it's hot like this, like I feel like I could just swim in it. Yeah, I was thinking about Bath. Mm. I it's feel really like nice I'm in Bath, bath in Bath. Beirut. Never been, but mm. Mm. lovely. Oh. Anyway, there you go. Second way to use aubergine. I'm gonna show you the last way to use aubergine. We're gonna fry it really simple. We're making curry. It's more like braising it. So we're gonna use moisture and heat and steam as a mean to infuse flavor and to break the cell wall down. This aubergine typically takes quite a long time to cook. In this method, we're gonna cook it in probably approximately eight minutes and turn it into a delicious curry that will probably take you between 10 and 15 minutes and it's gonna taste fantastic. Okay, we've got a wide bottom pan. It's a non-stick pan. I'm gonna pop in a couple of squirts of oil. I find a spray oil is better because it makes, means I use less of it. Into our wide bottom pan, we're going in with half a white onion. We've chopped it nice and fine. This is gonna be the base flavor just to give it a little bit of kind of carrier of body to the dish. While the onion's cooking down, which will take about three to four minutes, I have two cloves of garlic and I have a tum sized piece of ginger. I'm gonna chop it nice and finely. You said tum there, didn't you? I said a tum. Tum, is that the same as a thumb? It is, yeah, it is. Okay, good to know. Good. Now, a lovely, uh, it, was, it was Jane and Sue from England came to visit the weekend, and they said, you know, they came to swim with us, and they were super, like, wonderful people. And one thing they asked us to say, lads, you say one thing for us, a tum, tum A tum-sized piece of ginger. <laughs> we don't say it like that, we say a thumb. It's a thumb. No, we're not, you know. So, I've got a I tum. think they were from Thailand. Yeah, no, they're from Oxfordshire. Yeah. Okay, so chop your thumb-sized piece of ginger into small little pieces. The smaller you chop it, the more the flavor is going to permeate throughout the dish. And then I've got two cloves of garlic. Don't worry, the garlic, you want it to go into the pan slightly later because it cooks quicker. So once the onions are starting to brown and caramelize, in goes our garlic and ginger. 
So garlic and ginger, you only want to cook the garlic for about a minute until it goes gold. And then we're going to add our aubergine. So while that's going, I have one red pepper, also known as a capsicum. This is the easiest way to chop a pepper. Okay, onion, garlic, and ginger have fried right down. Now it is time for the aubergine, also known as eggplant. I've simply used a uh, I've simply used a serrated knife or a knife with teeth, and I chopped them into small, fine little bits. We're going to add them straight to the pan as is. Very important tip here is to make sure and cook them long enough till they go soft, goo in your mouth, and really break down. So I'm going to with a decent pinch of salt. It's gonna help the cell walls break down and help them kind of release some of their moisture. We've cooked down the aubergine for about two minutes. I've got my red pepper sliced, in it goes. And we're gonna make our dressing. So this is the liquid that we're gonna braise our aubergine in. So I've got three tablespoons of water into a glass and I'm gonna go with two tablespoons of tamari or soy sauce. And in it goes. Give it a nice mix then and we're putting a lid on. So what the lid, we're reducing it to medium heat and we're popping a lid on. So what the lid does is it captures the steam and we've suddenly gone from frying to actually steaming or braising. And what we wanted to do is to break down the cell wall of the aubergine and infuse that wonderful little umami note. Aubergine itself is quite dry, it's quite like a sponge. So by braising it in moisture, it really does start to loosen those cell walls and it starts to melt and become that distinctive kind of buttery delicious texture. Okay, if you notice that the aubergine is starting to stick to the bottom, so very important, see the way there is a little bit of caramelization in the bottom, simply add a little bit of moisture. Another bit, I've added another three or four tablespoons. I'm gonna deglaze it slightly, make sure everything's loose, and then I'm gonna pop the lid back on and steam it for another couple of minutes. This is probably eight minutes in total what we're gonna steam it for. Steam, steam slash braise, as Stephen said, I prefer the word braise when it comes to aubergines. Just makes it sound more chefy. Okay, we braised and kind of steamed it for probably about six to eight minutes in total. The aubergine is nice and soft, it's broken down and it really is starting to melt. The point that you're looking for here is to take aubergine in a spoon, bring it up to your mouth. It should melt in your mouth. It should not be rubbery. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is mm. succulent. It should be soft, gentle, full of moisture and just like almost explode in your mouth. Okay, now it's time to put our sauce together. I've got one tin of chopped tomatoes. This is gonna be the base of our sauce. I've got one tin of coconut milk. So you can use low fat coconut milk if you want it to be lower in fat. This is actually full fat. Or if you wanted to make it lower in fat, just leave some of the fat at the top, it's still in the can. I've got one tin of butter beans or bean of choice that we have washed and rinsed, in it goes. Okay, in terms of seasoning, I've got two tablespoons of curry powder. We're gonna keep this super simple. One, two, very democratic dish. Really easy, boom. Okay, next got one pak choy that we have chopped nice and finely. It's just a few stalks of it, but it's gonna add a little bit more green, a little bit more vitality, and uh, just kind of lift the whole dish. You'll see it'll wilt down now very shortly as it starts to cook. Okay, one of the most important things with cooking and that's so underrated is the use of your tongue. And by that I mean to season a dish. Season is balancing those five base flavors. So sweet, salt, bitter, acidic, and umami. So when we taste it, the more I can find to use each of these, think of it like an orchestra, if you can include the wind, the bass, the, the string section. you say wind first. <laughs> you love saying wind first. Okay, well anyway, it'll sound more symphonic. Okay, anyway, so we're gonna taste this. We're gonna use our taste buds. Very tasty. Needs a little bit of salt, needs a little bit of black pepper. So I got a bit of salt here, a nice pinch to start with. I've got probably half a teaspoon of black pepper. It's just gonna help lift. And I'm gonna put just juice of half a lemon just to add a bit of acid that'll add vibrancy. We'll cut through that coconut milk and it'll just add a little bit more um, vitality to the dish. And folks, there we have it. Very simple aubergine and butter bean curry. Literally takes 15 minutes. Aubergine is typically associated with taking ages to cook. But when you fry it like this and braise it, it's simple, it's easy, and very, very tasty. There you go, three simple ways to cook our aubergine to show, or eggplant, just to show how incredibly tasty it can be. So we did the nice baba ganoush, which means spoiled dad, because it's so spoiled good. Spoiled dad, did we, did, we did aubergine bacon, which we put in this beautiful vegan Reuben. And then this is my favorite, simple aubergine and butter bean curry, very tasty. These are all ideas. Aubergine, this whole book, The Veg Box, is we've taken the 10 most popular veg, We've done them 10 ways using 10 ingredients. It's an absolute masterclass of how to use vegetables. For example, in the carrot section, we've got, you've got a couple of wonky carrots and you go, what do I do with carrots? Carrot granola, carrot cupcakes, carrot 
Flapjack. Flapjack. There's so, huge variety. And I think the goal of this book was just to show how easy and simple and incredibly tasty it can be to cook with vegetables. Because the single biggest thing you can do for the planet is to eat more veg. And the single biggest thing you can do for your own health is eat, eat more veg. Um, anyway, link down below to order the book. It's now available to pre-order. Thank you for watching. And please, if you do cook any of this on social media, please tag us. Because um, it's always lovely to see people cooking our, our recipes. So yeah, thanks Nell, really, really appreciate it. And uh, see you. Bye. Bye.